uh, colonial file that I will be able to upload in our system uh, will generate a exception report and merge with title. And now you have a complete um, due diligence mm -hmm. report and exceptions that you can give to, to the seller. David Nathan here. How are you, my man? Hopefully all is well. Um, things have been a little chaotic. I apologize for the, the craziness we're going on right now, um, but we're running into a, some issues that are out of my, I guess, control for a minute. Um, today, we're going to be doing some little special. I think what we've found in our space is that due diligence has became not only a requirement, of course, but a problem, some situation, because not all the data is easy to access. And a lot of the stuff we're trying to get to is all over the place. Yeah. So in your experience, Nathan, what did you start off with? And what did you start doing when you first got into due diligence? How did you manually do a lot of stuff? When I first started, uh, Again, this was back in the day when there was never any equity, right? So there was, it was always negative equity. Um, so I had to know what the value of the house was. That was like number one job. Number two job is to find out if there are any outstanding liens, any outstanding whatever's, anything else besides the first lien that I've, that I've just purchased. So uh, I would do, when I very first started, I would do calls to... Uh, counties, and I would ask about taxes and things like that. I would I would do all kinds of things like that. And then the further I went along, I met a guy named Alex, <laughs> and he told me about these title searches. And I'm like, oh really? <laughs> so started ordering those. And at the very first, especially, I'm not even sure how many times I called Alex. I'm like, okay, what does this mean? And like, how do you, how do I read this? And like, what is that? When it says this on the report, what is that? And and I went over it with him, and he was very patient with me, and and uh, coached me through how to read uh, these reports that he was that he was producing, and and it was extremely helpful. And now I don't call him nearly as much. Every once in a while, I still get stumped, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. So I'll still call either Alex or somebody on his team, and and just say, so what is this line? I've never seen that before. Yeah, I think for a lot of us it was a lot of information in the beginning and we were getting not only going after zoom, uh, going after Zillow and going after, you know, realtor, all these different sites to gather data. Then we go to the County records. And then it became a point where we just, it was a lot of information everywhere. And in the note space, we're lazy. Yeah. Right. Let's be honest here. We're extremely <laughs> lazy people. And I think what we've found is we like to, we like things to be as simple as possible for yeah. us to be doing things in a clean layout. We we're talking in just Wednesday about um, the idea of don't send us PDFs, send us something a little bit cleaner. Yeah. Right. Spreadsheets. However, and a spreadsheet, I can easily move it around. I can, you know, arrange it how I like to see it, that kind of thing. It's way just, it's just way easier. Yeah. But yeah. Clean and easy to read. Um, I've seen total reports from some people where uh, it takes me a while to just decipher it. And so that's, that's actually one thing I really liked about pro title and we'll have Alex come on in here in just a minute, but yeah, uh, I find their reports are really easy to read uh, very straightforward. Those first couple of pages of the summary and it's just all the information's right there. Yeah, absolutely. I think for us, um, we often want things to be as clean as possible for us to look at, but also in a, in a layout that we is consistent Yeah, in our space. A lot of things aren't consistent. Right. Um, and when I first looked at pro title, I oddly enough, easily understood it because yeah. of the way it laid out and we, things kind of, you know, brought to our attention. So it was really cool to see that happen. Yeah. Um, when we come across stuff like this, 
it makes our job as investors a whole lot easier to do, um, which is great. So when we yeah. say this stuff, we bring on someone like Alex to kind of share his knowledge and experience. Um, it's it's extremely beneficial, right? Yeah. So we want to bring on Alex. I'm going to screw him in here. It may be, uh, Sal may be working on Facebook, LinkedIn, which is great. If not, let us know. But we're recording this. We'll be on YouTube um, real quick. So Alex, how long have you been doing this title stuff? I feel like forever. It feels like forever. Hey, guys, great to be here. Um, not only you're my clients, you're my friends, right? Every time we meet, it's a small group of folks that know each other. I love to hang out with you guys. Next time I'll see you at the conference, we'll definitely catch a drink. Um, but uh, I've been doing this stuff since 2007 as, as Pro Title USA, but prior to that, I was the investor, just like you, Dave, and you, Nathan, into apartment buildings and student housing, and I used somebody else, and I absolutely hated them. And therefore, I said, listen, I want to build something better, which is easier to understand for the investors, and uh, I launched Pro Title, which... Uh, uh was an experiment for me but uh, apparently it was successful enough to to make it a a full-time business and it grew uh exponentially to the point of you know us today uh sitting talking to each other while we have contracts with uh, some of the uh, large funds out there um, billion dollar funds gscs uh fdac and others that now utilize pro title uh, as as one of the uh, key vendors to provide the uh, the title data, and as you pointed out, David, it's the key is standardizing the data. It doesn't matter where it comes from, right? You have mm -hmm. 3,500 jurisdictions in the U.S. Every jurisdiction um, has its own unique way of recording data or documents, and uh, we have solved the issue of you know pulling the data from different jurisdictions. Uh, different documents, standardizing the data and delivering a uh, single formatted report to the investor. So it's easy to understand whether the data comes from Vermont or Maine or or uh, Florida or Puerto Rico, for that matter. Um, and we, we do uh, service quite a bit of uh, investors in the capital markets, both in residential and commercial space. So that's that's sort of uh, my my story how far we go back and, and how far we, we, uh, we went forward from the time we started. I'm trying to remember <clears throat> when we met, it was probably like 2012 or 13, somewhere in there, 14, maybe. I'd say prior to that, but I, somewhere in there, I don't remember, but, but I remember, I remember meeting Alex and going, man, this guy is looking to make a mark. <laughs> he wants to dominate this space and and in a big way i think you've done that where you know you go and ask anybody where who do you get your title reports from and almost always it's pro title that's the name that comes up yeah i mean I'm, I'm pretty happy uh that that you know we dove in to the space and i wanted to design the best product in the market right uh in fact um right now i own three companies Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm a CEO of three companies. Pro Title is one of them. I have acquired nationwide doc prep and recording firm called Doc Solution USA out of Houston um, in 2021. And now we're growing like crazy. And the company that we're probably going to touch on this call is called One Diligence. That's the software company that is targeted to solve the data extraction, machine learning. AI aspects of loan files, right? When you do diligence, uh, combining all three creates a very powerful one-stop shop solution for any investor that that nibbles at the at the mortgage investments. So um, the more I look at the market, the more I see that with a lot of automation and AI, you can consolidate a lot of the services into a single package and make it so efficient that not only the title, credit and compliance, the loan file review, critical document review, data extraction, um, solving curative issues, preparing the assignments automatically, that's all going to be solved in a single 
shop. You don't need three vendors, you just need one or at least one umbrella, right? So that's the goal for me next to go ahead and create this single structure of seamless due diligence on the market that nobody else has. Interesting. Amazing. Holy you know, cow, man. Automation is something I've talked about a lot and I, I preach a lot simply because it it saves time, reduces errors, right? And allows you to do what you do best. You know, a lot of us are not researchers. We, we're we investors. We're numbers people. We crunch stuff. For us to investigate and do all stuff, to be honest with you, sometimes we get lazy and like, well, I've done enough. However, we we enjoy the data that we're able to pull in in a quick process. We like the data. We just don't like going to get it, right? Um, and the more data we have, the better we are at it. But at the same time, I think for us, the idea of AI is something that I think is kind of a hot topic right now, and we don't fully understand it, right? So how did you get into this idea of not only pulling title and O and E reports, but getting into the automation and doing it with technology. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's let's try to focus on what AI is, right? So a lot of people hear the buzzword AI and and machine learning, and we really don't have a good understanding what it is uh, specifically for what we do, right? It's very hot topic. Everybody's talk, talking about it. It's as hot as uh, you know blockchain. That's another hot topic, right? So, um, well, probably I'd say ten years ago, if somebody would say I'm working on AI, what I would think it's uh, it's it's bunch of killer robots running around, just like in James Cameron movie, right? So mm -hmm. that's AI. It's somebody that you know, is a human with a robot brain and does something that, that replaces the human. Um, well, yes and no, right? So it's, it's definitely something that a human creates to do something for human, uh, but it's very narrow focused, right? So uh, you hear the buzzwords, uh, chat GPT, right? Mm -hmm. So now it's very, what is that? Well, it's it's a great tool to replace all the admins um, in all the companies. Yeah. That really is a tool to analyze the text data and you know continue the conversation or try to find out what the what the client wants uh, or needs to do. Right. So it's it's analysis based on some uh, textual data. The um, there's things like um, RPA, right? That was pretty hot and still very hot, right? So it's everybody probably saw in the airports a sign for UI Path, right? Very hot company that I think started in Romania and now headquartered in New York, a multi-billion company now. Uh, all they do is have mini robots that sitting on your desktop and learning what you do every day. So for things that are robotic and uh, automated or, or really mechanical, those things are great. Uh, the price for that little robot is $10,000 a year, roughly, plus or minus, right? So it's a robot that sits and does something, accounting or some, some tech stuff or, you know, some updates or some, some coding even. Sure. So, uh, but that's not what we are here to discuss, right? All of them are uh, doing the task that human would train them to do. The AI and machine learning in our mortgage space it's mm -hmm. really very simple. The task is simple, but to implement it, it's very tough. Um, the task is I have a loan file where Nathan right. is buying a loan. He has the loan file, which is 6,000 pages. Mm -hmm. I would really hate to look at every page and find out what it is, right? Because it's, it's up to me to run diligence and I don't wanna do it, I'm too lazy, right? So what I want to do is I want to take this 6,000 page document load it somewhere and get something back that tells me, hey, you know, you're missing a note or uh, it's out of compliance or, you know, the title policy insures for the amount which is too low, right? Mm -hmm. Than the mortgage itself. So all of those bells and whistles and checks, ideally you want to have a black box that automated everything, right? 
So let's call that AI module for a diligence. That's what one diligence is. It's a system or a platform that allows people to drop their loan file inside and get the exception report back, right? So um, what is machine learning, right? That's another hot buzzword that we talk about. So machine learning is uh, for any document that machine doesn't understand from either understanding what this document is or uh, what data is inside the document called data extraction, right? Have an ability to learn on the fly what this document should be. And then next time the document uh, is a part of the loan file, uh, it recognizes it and it knows which data to extract and how to use that data, right? So there's a lot of rules to understand. All right, so this is a uh, loan application and this is specific for whatever it is. And I've never seen it before, but now I saw it and I know how to learn it. And next time this application loan application will comes up, I know exactly what it is. And besides that, you know, I know where to grab the data points that are needed for me to make a decision that this is for my property, for my borrower, for uh, uh, the right mortgage and so on, right? Uh, whether it's compliant, um, it has all the things uh, that that you need in the loan app. And if, it, if I don't have it, then I would come up with some sort of an exception report that will flag the investor like Nathan to say, hey, I'm missing demographic form, right? And therefore it's not compliant. So you would ask the seller for, hey, give me a collateral for this file again, I'm missing this page, or you have to choke up a discount. Right, because now I'm facing a risk for a borrower saying that I didn't sign the right document. Or maybe you have unsigned loan agreement or unsigned HUD one final statement, whatever it is, right? So now you have to be able to make rules to check things on the fly, right? Mm -hmm. And that's called machine learning, right? Machine learning to identify and then build the rules on top. So I know it's a long answer, but I hope that that sort of puts it in perspective. What's AI? What's AI for? for our field right sure. yep and and what to do with it so i could i could send you a digital collateral file and just and say okay give me the report at the end and then it'll give me like a one page thing to say what like terms as well as anything missing documents that didn't get signed missing launches that kind of thing um yes so so um yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be one page. Uh, it okay, might okay. be a, a, a pretty comprehensive report. But um, um, if that's the limitation, and maybe multiple pages, but I went no. from 100 pages down to 15. <laughs> maybe, but um, <laughs> it's 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 a uh, probably the the um, what you get is the exception report in Excel, right? So for every loan, yeah. you'll have an exception that we would find. But uh, conceptually, that's that's absolutely correct, Nathan. You give us a file. You say, I have no idea what's there. Seller gave me this, this tape. And then I want to make sure that what I'm buying, what I'm counting the seller for this tape is absolutely accurate with the loan files. And there's mm -hmm. no issues or, or discrepancies between the loan file of 6,000 pages, right? And my loan tape, right? Because mm -hmm. you're using the uh, loan tape as a tool to bid on a loan. And you're trusting the seller to make sure the loan tape is accurate, right? right? Trust but verify. And therefore you have to have some tools to be able to see if you're buying the accurate loan, right? And all documents are there. And you don't have to chase the seller when you close on a transaction two years after that you need a note to go and foreclose on the property, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you don't have a note, you can foreclose. Mm -hmm. How long does this take a user if they logged in and start doing this? Well, uh, we typically don't let the users uh, play around with, with the system uh, as far as QCing, uh, but at the same time, we do provide the SaaS-like approach, uh, or we provide our QC staff to go and, and look at, at the documents. I'll, I'll give you a little demo as well, sure. maybe, uh, yeah a little bit uh, uh, later, but 
Um, you have a someone asked someone asked, do you have a background in AI and technology? No. I I am yes. one of those people that, <laughs> you know, I, I love to invest myself in the latest and greatest. Um, I wanted to prove to myself that I can do it. And um, let me take a step back. And, and this is an interesting topic because uh, if you are a software engineer or if you get yourself in, uh, in IT or technology uh, and you start investigating on how to build a machine learning system and you use the Google official you know, guide on this is how you build the, uh, the machine learning or AI system, I disagreed with it completely. I disagreed with Google, you know, throw stones at me, kill me. It's it's that's it. I just disagree. So um, the Google says that, or Amazon for that matter, says that you have to have a human in the loop, mm -hmm. which is a human to check that the machine extracted all the data points correctly. So you have somebody probably offshore, a lot of people that, again, I've seen all the solutions out there on the market, trust me. I looked at it, I tried it. I was not happy with any of them. So I said, just like the title search, I tried those, those vendors out there and one vendor cost me a $30,000 loss. I said, I'm doing it myself. So I built a system for a pro type. Same thing with one diligence. I looked at all the solutions out there. All of them have something called human in the loop. And I said, why do I need to bottleneck for my loan data extraction or data points extraction from the loan files by a human that sits somewhere in Philippines or India or Vietnam, anywhere, that they're looking at the loan file without complete understanding with the uh, probably exposure of private data uh, and bottlenecking on their review to give me a data back, crisp data back. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that the human loop should be there, but to me it doesn't, okay? And the reason why, why I, I say that human loop to me is not the correct approach is if the system is working perfectly, I don't need the human. I want the data instantly. So I, I loaded Nathan's loan file, I want mm -hmm. the data right away. Even though it's 90% of data comes back to me and not 100%, I don't want to spend time on that human to verify that all my data is correct. Sure. All right. So, so yeah. human in the loop aspect to me was a waste of time. It would bottleneck me uh, from my system. So I have designed a system with the help of uh, uh, very smart, a genius programming guys. Uh, one of one of the guys is, is my friends uh, who lives in New Jersey and we actually started ProTitle together. But um, he joined on this venture to design this, this beautiful system uh, that bypasses human loop and instantly delivers the data within, I'd say minutes, right? So uh, the challenge with the system is you have to have a two appended steps back to back. One is called indexing. What is the indexing? Indexing is a step that's required to identify each document within the loan file, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, um, you know, I have 6,000 pages and I wanted to identify a document within 6,000 pages, which is called a note, policy, mortgage, loan app, hard one, and so on or appraisal, or a mod for that. Once I identified the document, I wanted to submit it for extraction, data extraction. So I take this document and I submit it for data extraction. And then, you know, a few minutes later, I get the data back and I do something useful with it. So all this process, I currently didn't spend any human labor. I get the data. I run the rules engines, and then only now I get the expert human to run the QC on the whole system, right. right? So in other words, now I have a an expert person for credit compliance or for document critical review or whatever the uh, less mod data extraction, right now it's very popular, right? So you have a lot of forbearance, you have a lot of deferral agreements, 
you have a lot of mods on, 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 the, on the file. And very frequently, the data from all of those documents don't match to the tape, to the mm -hmm. servicer tape or to the investor tape because of last minute agreements or uh, last minute changes before the signing of the mod during the COVID time or, or what have you, right? And what frequently happens is, and I'm getting too deep, I know, uh, the, uh, after all the documents are signed, the um, PNI or the payment and, and interest does not calculate correctly to the state of maturity. And that's a normal, right? So in other words, you have uh, some deferral agreements with no interest bearing um, amounts and, and some mods with uh, different schedules. And it's not the same as a data tape, it's a complete mess. And now you don't know what you have, right? Wow. So you have to have a rule engine to calculate that your amortization schedule is correct, right? So all of those things can mm -hmm. be done under the hood with some sort of rule check. And let's say Nathan says, uh, you know, calculate that my latest mod that I signed with the borrower and all the deferred agreements, deferral agreements and all the, you know, um, uh, forbearance agreements and uh, post bankruptcy agreements, whatever that may be, uh, calculates correctly to the maturity. And if it doesn't, I'm going back after the seller and saying, hey, something's wrong. You gave me a wrong tape. I'm basing my investments on your tape and it's completely, you know, bogus. Mm -hmm. So um, those kind of things can, can go under the hood. And coming back to Nathan's points, you know, am I giving Nathan, you know, 50 pages worth of report? No, I'll just have one exception stating that for this loan, the um, amortization to stated maturity is above, let's say, whatever Nathan told me, $5,000 or $1,000. Wow. And therefore, Nathan has tools to go and negotiate and make a decision. Do I discount this loan or do I go and, uh, and uh, just tell seller, you take it back? So right? For those mm -hmm. people who are either newer or don't know the process, um, let me give you what we've done for years just to show you the difference, right? We get a file report in, we call pro title, we get a simple O and E report sent to us with the open mortgages, any taxes, outstanding taxes, copies of the mortgages and things are filed, maybe less penance filing, stuff like that. And we usually send this document along with our collateral file to either an attorney or a collateral management company to start reviewing. And we get with attorney make costs us a buck fifty, two hundred dollars, and we get an exception report in a few days. Um, this is doing it quicker, easier, and a lot of attorneys really don't like to review collateral files. It's not really worth their time and effort. Um, so that's the old fashioned way of doing it. And Alex is absolutely right; it doesn't really need. You need someone to understand what that looks like, but mm -hmm. you can connect things to things back and forth and see the chain being completed because it went from A to B to C to D as signatures. But then you also have to figure out if the actual numbers actually match up, which means you have to run your own amortization schedule, run your own data numbers. Having all this in one is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. I, yeah, I, I, I'm glad that I, I made people think. You know, it's 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 <laughs> right. People here, John Durville says that he does this for a living. I believe he has a background in AI, and what you're doing um, is amazing. So it's thanks, very unique for the industry that has pretty archaic solutions out there. So let's we'll just say that. Um, I'm, 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 my goal is to basically throw money to break the market, right? Uh, we're trying to change um, how things are done in a way that makes sense, right? With the latest technologies, um, I think we should be able to create something that costs less, quicker, and easier to understand, right? So as, as a buyer and seller of the mortgages or real estate, you get a title with recorded docs, as David put, and collateral file of unrecorded stuff, right? And typically, 
ProTitle would do a great job in, in understanding what's going on with the file, you know, from the recording docs perspective, liens, mortgages, taxes, and so on. Um, and we would generate a bunch of dashboards uh, and analytical things just specifically for title. And I always thought, you know, it's so weird. We 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 are just focusing on this narrow um, element of the due diligence without looking at the full scope of the diligence. And uh, that's what triggered me to go and 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 buy the doc prep and recording firm, which now enables us to generate the assignments and releases instantly instantly mm -hmm. by ocring and validating data on the pro title side right so in other words i already deal with the title documents i already yep. get the mortgage i get all the data points what prevents me from pushing a button and generating the assignments nothing mm -hmm. So why would somebody pay a separate vendor to prepare the assignment of release? To me, that, that never made sense to me because they do double work of, of ver verifying the assignment chain, uh, verifying the, uh, the mortgage data points. It's already done. If I integrate the, yeah, the machine learning and OCR function within the title report, now I have all the data, which is called cleansed, that can be passed to prepare the, the next assignment or subordination agreements or release of the of the mortgage instantly. So mm -hmm. that's what we've been able to, to accomplish. And um, by the way, I also carry the uh, custodian uh, capability as well. So if you need to store the files, uh, we have a huge warehouse with the video surveillance 24 seven in Houston. Um, but that's, that's one part. And the next part is the uh, collateral file that I will be able to upload in our system uh, will generate a exception report and merge with title. And now you have a complete um, due diligence mm -hmm. report and exceptions that you can give to, to the seller. Now, the biggest problem on this market is cost, right? So in other words, with COVID and raise of the uh, employee wages, the cost for diligence uh, went up probably doubled, right? Yep. If, if you're looking at the um, uh, collateral reviews or compliance reviews. So uh, what we're trying to do is find the most cost-effective solution out there by not using a fancy buzzword technologies in AI, such as, you know, say neuro video card graphic capture of image on the page and figuring things out. Now, that's too expensive, by the way. So if I would be processing photographs, that would be perfect technology, right? Mm -hmm. um, if I would be processing text, all I need is the NLP technology, which is the natural language processing. Uh, understanding of documents, right? Or standard form document approach where, um, where if the form itself doesn't change, then I can, I can really inexpensive grab the data from there. So we're talking about the other characteristic. Yeah, that's the other characteristic of a node investor. A, we're lazy, B, we're cheap. So if we're, if we're going to pay for due diligence, we're not, you know, $100 for a title report, no problem. You know, three hundred dollars yeah. for a title report? Nah. <laughs> we'll skip it. We'll, we'll look it up our own county record, right? That's yeah. what we typically do. <laughs> so when you say this is going to be inexpensive, what is that? I mean, what do you think that will be around if you can? Just to scrape the file, let's say to uh, produce the critical document review. In other words, uh, there's a set of a dozen documents that must be present for uh, for each collateral file. And those are usual suspects, right? So it's the uh, security instrument, it's a note, it's a launch, it's it's um, uh, hard one, and so on. Um, probably we're talking about anywhere from you know 40 to 50 dollars, maybe even 35. Mm -hmm. So that's cheap. Um, mm -hmm. and that will produce for you the exception report that 
um, will tell you what document is missing. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect for lazy investor. Mm -hmm. If you have a, let's say a 3000 to 5000 uh, page file, drop it and get the report, you're done. Um, when you talk about credit and compliance, probably, you know, uh, for a non-volume uh, clients, we're probably looking at, you know, 170-ish. And that's complete credit and compliance uh, review with, of course, no compliances, because that's a separate, uh, separate piece. Interesting. Um, so what about in the case, let's say it's the opposite issue where it's not a two- 200, 300 page document or 6,000 or whatever. Let's say it's a 10 page document where it's a seller finance deal. And the indexing in that is going to be different. Like they they might not even call it a note. So how do we, yeah. would that work still? Or is well, that? It's, it's very niche market, right? So I, I'm focused on, on uh, the mainstream markets. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, so let, let me take a step back and, and give you a few things that you, uh, I guess, uh, things to know as an investor of what we need um, to train our system. I always thought that um, if we're big enough as a company, you have to have your own um, training set up for indexer and training set up for data extraction. Okay. Um, I think you have to throw in the money to build your AI system or your machine learning system. And um, I looked at also, like I said, I looked at all solutions out there and I was not happy uh, either because solution is good enough, but to add one field takes six months, mm -hmm. right? So in other words, you know, I want that field to be extracting, which is a new field. And the vendor would say, well, stand in line. It takes six months to do. I said, mm -hmm. all right, uh, I don't have six months. I need it now. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's easier for me to build a system and uh, build a training system for data extraction, build a training system for um, uh, for the indexer. So for indexer to work, we need 200 samples. Doesn't matter which documents, mm -hmm. right? Seller finance documents or contract for deeds. I know it's very, very niche. Mm -hmm. uh, we need 200 samples of single uh, type of documents for a system to know that this is a seller finance note or this is a you know, contract for the, and it'll always, whenever it sees that type of document, it'll know, okay, I know what that is. Um, and we will use the same set of 200 documents to extract the data points. Right now, our production is about, we can train up to 20 new documents a week for the indexer and we can, um, get two new documents a week for the data extract, which What's means that document. What does a new document look like? Let's say Nathan brought up uh, seller finance. I don't remember what it looks like, Nathan. Even though I've been around, maybe I do. I, uh, I, I don't know if this is a unique uh, document in our library, but let's assume it's a new document, right? Yeah. That we've never seen before. Our system never seen before. We always label it as unknown. Um, so Nathan said, all right, I really have this ongoing business where I need you to recognize that document. And uh, uh, you will send me 200 samples on the NDA for our system to train on those documents, right? Um, and we need a very clean documents to train, right? So we cannot use the whole loan file. Just give us a page one to page N of that document and mm -hmm. no blank pages and no dark pages just that pure document. So the system like NLP would understand, read the text, understand what yeah. this document is, look at the header, look at the how it's structured and really understand what this document is. And after that, we'll take that and say, Nathan, what data fields you need from seller finance notes? Mm -hmm. And you'll say, I need this, 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 and the interest rate, I need borrower name, lender name, and all of the good stuff. And I wanna know if it's signed or not and if it's not right and so on. Um, we take that and next time we already know what this document is and what data points to extract. That's what I mean by new doc. Yeah, that's so hard because I know Nathan and I went through this process and that's going to be a struggle, I'm sure, for you because what they call borrower, I think I had 15 different variables and what they call borrower and just the different type cases were just 
unreal. Um, but at the same time, there's also 3,000 counties nationwide. And how hard is it to get all 3,000 counties? You've already accomplished that. So uh, I challenge you, but I'm afraid to challenge you because I know you'll probably figure it out, which is tremendous. So how quickly does this typical mm -hmm. process, if I'm going to send you a file that you've seen before, we've got the cost, how quickly can this expect it to be returned to an email back to us with a document inside of it? Yeah, so um, how quickly? Well, let's say we're doing the uh, critical document review for the regular mortgage. Again, I don't know what you're yep. scaring me with the uh, seller finance, <laughs> uh, but the regular mortgage probably will be you know, a couple of days because I want to allocate some time for the human to get in and to analyze the data, right? Mm -hmm. um, as far as the machine and AI portion, uh, I'd say probably 20, 25 minutes. Wow. Amazing. Right? So could you say that people who are typically sending this stuff to collateral companies to check, attorneys to check, are they still needing to do that? Or is that something that they just need to do now and you, as you grow, you won't have to? Or you no, you I, 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 I'm, that. I'm not here to replace attorney uh, <laughs> or attorney opinion. No, 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 no. Um, so, so, uh, we don't provide legal opinion, right? So that's the disclosure. Um, I'll give you an, an example. Um, let's say you're buying a note in New York and you don't know what anti-angle law is that was signed by a governor at the end of the year, which really makes your note uh, unenforceable. Attorney would know, and attorney would would know how to check what to check from the perspective of you know prior foreclosure action, affirmation agreements, releases, and so on. You don't. Attorney does. Mm -hmm. We're not the attorneys. We're not going to assume uh, the liability um, or interpretation of the documents. Right. Uh, we provide the data and the data points, um, and I think. In different states that there's different things that you need to know we don't we provide the data right so we analyze the documents we analyze the standard compliance which is i guess federal and state uh, compliance we analyze the title data we're experts in it, right to interpret the data if you're not an expert investor then you probably need a attorney that's awesome then we can take that report that we get back and I would probably still send it with the original collateral file over to the attorney, but with that report attached saying, we've already gone through it. Here's the summary, you know, is there anything we need to look, look out for? Is there any, you know, weird gotchas in here that we're not. Exactly. Um, it, it's uh, not only you, you send the uh, original collateral, we bookmark it for you automatically. Right. So that's yeah. a part of the machine process where once you index the file, we return the bookmark file mm. in the PDF bookmark uh, to you and to the attorney. Uh, and we create the exception report, which you can send to not only to your attorney to review, but to the seller yeah. and say, can you comment on all of those exceptions that you know, one diligence pulled up and therefore you know, maybe their attorney will look at it and comments on your exceptions by uh, by saving you some dollars, right, to, to go to your attorney. So, Alex, you, we're coming to the close of the hour, so we want to make sure we give enough time for everyone. Um, I think for a lot of people, this is up here, just just below over their head. But what, what they're going to find out shortly is that this is going to save them time, energy, be able to respond to sellers quicker, um, and be able to just analyze things without guessing at things which is a really difficult thing that people do regularly is they guess of what they think it is and when they're a new investor guessing is a real dangerous thing to do what do you say to those investors who, who are getting into this space and what should they expect and in, in do with the information versus you know um because too many people rely on easiness right should they be diving in and learning a little bit more about this stuff before using this, or should they dive into it and learn it afterwards? That's a tough question. Um, so I always say that, you know, 
um, I, I'm in the same spot, by the way. Um, I'm the investor myself in non-real estate related things that I have no idea what, what to do, how to do, what to look for, how to run diligence. And I rely on somebody with expertise to say, hey, you know, I'll give you an example. I invested in, in um, uh, oil and gas uh, funds or, or, uh, or uh, fracking wells. And so I have, I've never dealt with it, but sounded logical, right? And somebody guided me through that investment. Uh, same as, you know, buying notes or self-finance notes. If you have money and you say, hey, I want to invest here without knowledge, that's a little bit dangerous, right? So I would follow uh, advice from David and Nathan on what to do, how to do, and, and go through the waterfall approach. Otherwise, you just, you, you are, you're going to lose money. Yeah, that's that's my advice to you, to the investor, be careful. Um, a selfless plug is, you know, which I don't make any money on, it's just it's out there in, in Amazon, uh, buy a book from uh, that I, I put together for the title. And that at least gives you a basic understanding on how to read the title reports. That's part one. I don't have any book on diligence or doc prep, so uh, I'm too lazy to write it. It just, uh, I don't have any time. Maybe I need to hire a ghostwriter, but uh, yeah. Uh, but, but in essence, you really have to get education, right? So. Uh, actually, on compliance, there's a few free courses, I think, that are being offered by our governments. Um, so that that I've seen by MBA, I've seen if you're a registered member of Mortgage Banker Association, they offer some free courses um, from the investment perspective uh, on credit and compliance or doc prep and things like that. So uh, get education or get together with somebody who knows the business. Um, otherwise, it's, it's going to be a tough time for the uh, newly, uh, a new investor. That's awesome. So yeah. um, I did want to pop in before we disconnect and Nathan asks his, his question. We're getting top of the hour here. I um, want to remind everyone that we actually are for DME videos. We've recorded them. Unfortunately, Alex was not there. However, um, I would encourage you guys, if you're looking for additional trainings, understanding and everything else, um, we do have the recordings of both days at the DME no conference that happened early in June. Um, I just put the link in the in the comment section, LinkedIn and Facebook. I'll put it into the YouTube channel as well. Um, please go ahead and click on that. Take a look at it. You can purchase both days and you'll see all the recordings uh, with speakers and whatnot. So yeah. I'll let Alex, I'll let Nathan Alex, X Alex, our famous last question. Yeah, what do, you, what do you see on the horizon, Alex? Like you've been doing this a while now and you've, you've got a, a unique perspective on where things have been and where they're going because you're looking at really the past. And so what do you see coming up in our future? Are, are we looking at what's your housing projection? Housing? Well, I can, I can, or whatever. <laughs> um, let's see. So, so this is not my projection. Um, it's, it's more from mortgage banker association uh, yeah. I think uh, David from Corny is, is the uh, data scientist for MBA. And I attended Texas Mortgage Banker Conference where he predicted that uh, all the COVID money and all the PPP money and all the government supported money that was given out in the past couple of years uh, for 50% of uh, folks will run out by September. Mm -hmm. So uh, he shows on the curve that uh, at, after September, uh, homeowners that are really in trouble, in distress, will probably be forced to sell, right? Or they will get into distress. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, <clears throat> it's the banking crisis was avoided by FedNow policy, where all the banks that tapped into $8 billion worth of lifeline to uh, save themselves sort of recovered from being uh, retaken by FDIC. However, it doesn't solve their problems, right? If the rates will stay low, um, sorry, if the rates will stay high, um, they're still in trouble. And I don't know how much they can borrow. Um, so commercial real estate, uh, loans that were originated by those smaller banks, uh, those loans will, will drive those banks uh, 
down and I don't know if they'll survive. Uh, so it's yet to be seen. Um, I feel that uh, a lot of things will be unpacked towards the end of the year, Q3, Q4, uh, and you'll see a pickup of foreclosures in distressed market after September uh, as far as the number of filings. So that's what I see going in the future uh, by looking at the data from MBA, uh, by talking to my colleagues and funds that that really have a lot of dry powder on the market right now. Billions of dollars are waiting to be invested in distressed assets and they're waiting for the for the right time. So if you are a new investor and you're getting into this market, I think it's the right time, right? Third you get educated, you try one or two months. Yeah. Third and fourth quarter is that time where we really be looking to what we should expect. And, and we actually had the NBA come to DME, or let me phrase that. Nathan had the NBA come to DME and was one of the open speakers and shared some of the charts you talked about. And it was shocking. Um, yeah. Not what I expected. Fascinating information. She shared some really great stuff. Yeah, this is, a, I, I think this is a great time to get in. It's, it's never really a wrong time to get in, but this is a great time to get in because uh, there's more coming. We want to respect your time, man. I will disconnect from the live feed. We'll do a quick uh, close up on the outside. And I uh, appreciate everyone tuning in. And we will see everyone in two weeks. We'll be talking about partials and uh, collateral assignments and pledging notes with our attorneys. So look forward to seeing everyone soon. Alex, once again, thank you for joining us this week. Yeah. Thanks, thank guys. You. Great time. All right.